Hello, I'm Mark Field and for several years I served in the British Parliament and as a Minister of State in the UK Foreign Commonwealth Office. My long-standing interest in foreign affairs led me to examine the Moroccan Saharan issue and it surprises me that the international community doesn't take greater interest in this long-standing uh, dispute. Having seen how the UK resolved over many years the Northern Ireland issue, with all sides having to give way uh, with some long-cherished positions, I am, however, optimistic that the United Nations motivation, the regional players in North Africa, can reach a compromise on the way forward. The UN-sponsored roundtable meetings in Geneva began a process which should, in my view, be encouraged. It's vital not only that the Moroccan and the Polisario representatives meet and talk, but also that Algeria and Mauritania take part. It seems to me that a permanent solution can only be achieved with Algerian and Mauritanian support. So I think it is up to the international community uh, to urge their respective governments to attend UN-sponsored roundtable talks. Morocco's regional autonomy proposals have been welcomed by members of the UN Security Council as a positive and constructive way forward. They would enable the Moroccan Saharan southern provinces to directly control their civil and economic development, whilst defence, foreign affairs and religious matters remain national responsibilities. As a Democrat, I was very pleased to learn that in the community and parliamentary elections in Morocco, the residents of those southern provinces had the highest voter turnout of some 79%. That, in my view, shows a real hunger for representative democracy that I think should now be encouraged as well as recognised. For Britain's part, our role as a permanent member of the UN Security Council means we should do everything possible to encourage Morocco, the Polisario, Algeria and Mauritania to continue round table talks in a positive mindset. The situation in the Tindouf camps is simply awful and through international aid uh, we do what we can but the people there obviously deserve a much better future than the generations of uncertainty and economic depression that we have seen. As sponsors of the Tindouf camps and indeed uh, the Polisario, the Algerian government has in my view a responsibility therefore to attend roundtable talks and to encourage the progress that we all wish to see. The reforms that His Majesty King Mohammed VI introduced to Morocco with parliamentary reform, open and fair elections, reform to human rights and civil society and the economy have in my view secured a firm base for the future. It's time to let all the people of the southern provinces of the Moroccan Saharan uh, to cast off the past and to share in that stability and progress for the future. Hello, my name is Derek Conway and for 25 years I was a member of the British Parliament and for several years a Minister of the Crown, serving in the Ministry of Defence, the Treasury and also the Foreign Office. During my long career in politics I took an interest in the affairs of North Africa and Morocco in particular and I had an opportunity often to meet with Moroccan ministers but also with representatives of the Polisario so I came to know a little of the Moroccan Sahara issue. I was privileged to meet, it was fascinating to meet with representatives of the Sahrawi tribes, the tribal elders, who explained uh, their history, uh, their allegiances and their ambitions. And it was a wonderful opportunity to, to meet such a marvellous group of people from an incredible part of the world. That's why the UN-sponsored Geneva Roundtable Talks are so important. And it's so important that everyone is involved in them, not just the Moroccans, and the Polisario representatives, but also the neighbouring Mauritanian government representatives and especially the Algerians. It's uh, important to have all parties involved, as we discovered in Great Britain when we had the Northern Ireland peace process, a long-running dispute over the sovereignty in that part of the world, often very violent, and it took a great deal of effort to get all the participants round a table and people had to give up some long cherished positions, but it was eventually done. 
agreement was eventually reached and there's been a tremendous uh, surge in prosperity and stability for that part of the United Kingdom. And that's why those of us who consider ourselves friends of the region very much hope that the UN roundtable talks will prosper. You know, the Moroccans have put forward their idea for uh, an autonomy initiative, and that's been widely uh, agreed as a worthwhile way forward by all the major players in the UN and members of the Security Council. It is a remarkable autonomy initiative, and the Moroccan government has accepted that the way forward would be to give those who live in the southern provinces a much greater say over their affairs. And in many ways, that has already started to happen. I think it's quite remarkable that in the elections to the the civic uh, bodies and also to the parliamentary representatives, over 79% of the voters took part, the highest turnout anywhere in Morocco. And I must tell you, in the United Kingdom, uh, we don't get a turnout anything near that in elections for our municipal authorities. And so that 79% turnout in the southern provinces in Morocco shows there is a, a thirst for democratic control of their destiny, a desire to have a say in the health services, the housing issues, the road issues, the education issues, but also in the growing economic prosperity for the region. For every uh, dollar that is generated in the southern provinces, Morocco invests seven dollars. So far from exploiting the region, as is often alleged, it's quite clear that the Moroccan government centrally is putting a great deal of investment into that part of the world. I've had the opportunity to visit Leon a few times. I've visited Minerso, the United Nations peacekeeping mission, and seen the incredible work that they're doing. It's an impartial mission, obviously, um, but they know what's going on very closely on the ground. And during those visits, I met with human rights leaders and civic leaders, but I also had an opportunity to see how the economy of the area is changing, how the social fabric is developing. And it's very, very encouraging to see, to see the young people going to college, to see the businesses expanding. And that has come about because, in essence, the Moroccan Autonomy Initiative is driving forward their commitment. Obviously, the external affairs matters, defence, religious matters would remain in, in the national auspices, but regional control would very much be a matter for the people who live in those southern provinces. So I think it's quite easy for outsiders stepping back from this issue to look at it and say what is being proposed is a fair resolution. I met His Majesty King Hassan II and found him an incredible uh, personality, a very strong-minded man, a, a very firm leader with an incredible love for his country. And when he died rather prematurely, sadly, his uh, young son took over, young king, King Mohammed VI, and we all wondered, well, how is this going to go? And what we've seen under King Mohammed is a tremendous progress for Morocco. The reforms to parliamentary democracy, which have been internationally recognised as fair and are now well embedded into Moroccan society. Reforms in the judiciary and the family law and the civic code that have all ensured that along with increasing economic prosperity, that Morocco has become a stable beacon, not only in North Africa, but across Africa itself. There is much that Morocco can be proud of, showing that with enlightened leadership from their king and with the parliamentary democracy backing it up, that Morocco has an incredibly bright future. And that's why, in contrast, looking at what happens in the camps in Tindouf, uh, sponsored by the Algerians, as we know, the Polisario and their links with Algeria are no great secret. And yet conditions are awful. Uh, the future for them seems so grim and they look across to Morocco and see a very, very different and much brighter future. And I think it's awful that that continues to go on. So those of us who are friends of the region would urge all those involved to continue with the UN Roundtable Talks in Geneva, especially, obviously, Morocco and the Polisario and Mauritania, but particularly Algeria must step up to the plate. Algeria has such an important role to play in resolving this sadness. They really must accept their international responsibilities. The future for the people of the Moroccan Sahara can indeed be very, very bright. 
the future for the people in the camps must change, must improve, and that way forward will be the autonomy initiative that will give them a direct say over their future. We just have to wish them well.